Okay, so we ended the lecture last time by discussing several key system properties, things like stability, causality, time invariance, and linearity. And we're going to sort of follow um, um, up on that today by um, talking um, about um, the res system responses um, when we have a linear and, and time in invariant systems, okay? And so um, <clears throat> let's just uh, be more formal about this. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to look at um, system responses um, for so-called LTI uh, systems. Okay, and so LTI systems are systems that are um, simultaneously linear, that's the L is, and time invariant, that's the TI. Okay, so systems that have both these properties, sort of linearity um, and, and, and time invariant. And so why are we focusing on these systems? And so it, it's not because it, uh, that in general, uh, physiologic systems sort of um, always are linear and time invariant, or even that a majority of um, physiologic systems are, are truly linear and time invariant. Um, rather, we focus on these systems because um, when a system is both linear um, and time invariant, there's a certain um, sort of, uh, kind of regularity um, or consistency that's possible um, in, in the analysis um, such that um, we can um, we, um, we can systematically um, determine uh, the response with sort of methods that are, that are extremely powerful. And, and it turns out that um, even though physiologic systems um, generally aren't sort of in, entirely linear or time, uh, um, or, or time invariant, that we can often sort of um, model these systems, in, in, at least in, in certain sort of relevant re re regimes, such that, um, that, that the linear time invariant system provide a pretty good approximation, a really useful approximation, okay? So, so, so in short, um, these systems sort of are amenable to sort of rigorous analysis, and they can provide good approximations to sort of in a real kind of biological, physiological phenomena, all right? Um, and so um, what's so good uh, about these linear time invariant systems sort of in, in particular? And so the specific thing that we're going to be um, focusing on today is that these linear and time invariant systems have the property that um, if we um, that the um, <clears throat> the responses to um, the in, in some sense the most basic input something that we're going to call um, a unit um, impulse function um, input. Okay, um, is going to determine um, <clears throat> um, the response to any possible input. Okay, and that's a really sort of powerful thing. But if we know the response to some basic input, then we can um, f um, use that to figure out the response to any possible um, um, input, okay? So um, first of all, what's this um, unit um, um, in impu impu impulse function? And so the unit impulse function, um, so we'll, we're going to call this, this, um, this is input. So when this is the input, then the input x of n is going to be equal to um, delta of n. Okay, and so delta of n is going to be what we're going to use to um, refer to a unit um, impulse um, function. It's so important that we sort of you know, assign our own sort of character to it. It's, it's Greek letter delta. Okay, um, and so um, we use n for um, for um, discrete time, and 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 analogously um, t for um, continuous time. So if it's a continuous time system, we'd write x of t would be equal to delta of t. Okay, so x of t and x of n refer to the input. Okay, and this is and this delta of n and delta of t are um, in this particular particular case of the input being an, an, an unit impulse um, function. Okay, and so um, in discrete case, a unit impulse function uh, looks like this. Okay, so if I'm making a plot 
um, of the delta of n versus n, um, this unit um, impulse uh, function has a value of zero um, um, for almost all values of n, okay? Um, but it, it has a value, it gets a value of one um, when n is, is, is equal to zero, okay? And, and at no other times, okay? So even though I'm drawing this function in, in some sense as a, as a continuous uh, function, um, delta of n is, is discrete, and I just draw it this way because it's sort of easy for me to draw. And so the values of, of de delta n um, takes on sort of this value sort of at zero, and then there's a value um, of delta, so and this value is, is, is one, like I've written over here. Okay, um, and um, at and there's, there's another value of, of this function um, at n equals uh, one, or n equals two, n equals three, n equals four, um, etc. Okay, um, but these values when n does not equal zero, it, it's one, two, three, and four um, are all exactly zero, right? Um, analogously, when n is equal to uh, minus one, uh, minus two, minus three, minus four, etc., um, delta of n is also um, equal to zero. Okay, so this is um, the unit impulse function, and in some sense, we can think of it as sort of the most sort of you know basic um, sort of input that it's it's zero um, at, at at all times except the current time. Okay, and um, there's a con there's a continuous analog. We're not going to talk about that um, right now. We'll just we'll give examples um, um, in in discrete time, and then we'll, we'll come back around to um, um, how this sort of translates into into continuous time. Okay, because just just for the ease of explanation. All right, and so um, <clears throat> this 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 response to a unit impulse function um, is, is so important that we'll give it its um, um, that the, we'll give it its, its um, a special letter as well, okay? And and so um, this response um, is um, in general the res response of a system we call we call y of t or y of n, and the response to to specifically to a unit impulse function um, we'll actually call h of n, okay? So remember our, our basic sort of um, diagram of system um, input-output um, relationships is that we have an input x of n or x of t, and that goes into some system. I just call it sys here, okay? And that gives you an output y of n or y of t, okay? Depending on whether the system is is, is um, discrete, like x of n, or um, or, or, or continuous. Uh, like when the input is x of t, okay? Um, and um, in particular, um, when the um, input is, so that this is this is the general case, okay? And then this for specific case, um, when um, x of n is equal to h of n, sorry, <coughs> I said that wrong, if x of n in the, in the specific case, we have that um, the input x of n is equal to delta of n, okay? Um, then the response um, y of n will, will be equal to um, h of n, okay? And so h of n is the so-called impulse response of the system. Okay, and by that we mean is that's the system's response when the input is equal to a unit impulse. All right. So, um, <clears throat> how can we um, make use of this? And the, the best way to really sort of get at this is to um, is, is, is to give an example. Okay, and so um, I'm going to give an example here. All right, where we're going to give um, an, an input x of n that's not equal to delta of n. And sorry, I'm going to take off the notifications from my phone here. I always turn my volume down. OK, so I'm going to give an example where um, x of n um, is, is not 
um, um, equal to delta of n. Okay, so it's, it's, it's more general, but we're going to make use of um, what the response um, of the system is um, to, a, 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 um, to a unit um, Im impulse function. Okay. Um, sorry, sorry, there's one other thing I kind of um, want to say here, and that is that um, because the response of the unit impulse um, 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 of the system to a unit impulse function um, um, determines any possible input, we can actually sort of think of the system as being characterized by this response. Okay, and so we are then often going to sort of, um, <clears throat> um, in some sense, sort of think of systems right um, in terms of their um, of, of their impulse responses, and so we can will often actually just go kind of whole hog and say that um, x of n is going to go into a system that um, is described by an, a unit impulse response of h of n and give us an output y of n, right? And so the idea is that what the system is doing, since it's completely described by um, the unit impulse function, we can actually sort of think of the system in some sense as a system that has a unit impulse um, um, response h of n. Okay, and we'll sort of think of the system this way. Okay, now for example, we will um, have, I'll, I'll draw just a, some arbitrary x of n. Okay, and um, let's make it look like, I don't know, this. Okay, so um, x, let's, for this x of n, we'll give it a value of, um, of, of 2 um, at, um, at, at, at time equals 0, and a value of 4 at time equals 1, and a value of 1 at time equals 2, okay? And then at times 3, 4, 5, um, etc., the values or, or the value of this function is going to be 0, okay? And similarly, at time negative 1, uh, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, Etc. Um, the value is also going to be zero. Okay. And so, so if we, could, if we wanted to really be sort of really clear about um, about diagramming this, we could put sort of z. This is a value x, x of n is value zero here, here a value of two, and up here a value of four. Okay. All right. And so the observation that we're going to make that's really sort of the cornerstone. Of, of the whole sort of analysis that we're going to proceed with today and, and make use of for a good fraction of the semester is that um, even when x of n isn't, um, isn't a, a unit impulse and doesn't actually particularly look um, super close to a unit impulse um, function, that we can um, break it down into, a, um, an, um, into the summation of um, several scaled and shifted um, unit impulse functions, okay? And so what do I mean by that? What I mean here is that we can take this x of n and we can express it um, as a sum, in this particular example, a sum of, of, of three um, components, x0 of n, um, x1 of n, and x2 of n, okay? Um, where um, x0 of n is just the part of x of n that um, happens, that occurs um, at time zero, okay? And so if I was to um, plot this, it would just look like this, okay? So um, at time zero, um, x um, zero of n would be have a value of two, and at all other times, it would have values of zero, okay? And analogously, um, x one of n, okay, would um, take on a value of four, um, when x is equal to um, when x is equal to one, okay, and be zero at all other times. Okay, and and finally, um, <clears throat> x two of n would take on a value of one when t is equal um, to when when n is equal to um, to two. So this is n plotted, of course, over here on the x-axis. Um, and so um, at n equals 2, it would be a value of 1. 
okay, and zero at all other times. So in these plots, this is zero here, so the space line, okay? Um, <clears throat> and so we can take this x, um, x of n that has values at several different non-zero values at several different time points, and then break it down into the sum of, of components that has a value uh, that each of which have a value only at a single um, time point, okay? And, um, and these are just sort of a shifted versions of one another, and what they, um, and, and more generally, with um, these, these functions x0 of n, x1 of n, and x2 of n are scaled and shifted versions of this, um, un of this unit um, impulse, okay? And so in particular, x2, x, sorry, x0 of n is just simply equal to 2 times um, delta of n, right? And x1 of n is it's four times um, a unit impulse that's shifted um, by, by, by one unit. Let me just write one here, two here, okay? Um, and so it's, I could write, it's, this is equal to four times a unit impulse that's shifted one to the right, so that would be four times delta of n minus one. Okay, um, and x2 of n would be equal to um, analogously 1 multiplied by delta of n minus 2. Okay. Hello? Hey. Yeah, I'm okay. Uh, no. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll come by a little later, but I can't come now. Okay, I love you too. Okay, bye.